In a previous vault log, I reviewed this Kaysgur T12 soldering station. It was the first station I got my hands on from this manufacturer, and the one I have here is version 2.1S. I was pleasantly surprised by the features it has. If you haven't seen that video, I will link it on screen right now. Since then, I've been using it as my main soldering station and I've been pretty happy with how it works, but some of my viewers who have been using these for longer than me have pointed out a few things I missed in the video review. So this will be a uh, quick update video to show you the uh, things I missed about this uh, soldering station. We're going to start by looking at the uh, IAC mains connector. I have the station disassembled for this and if we look closely at this connector even though we have heat shrink placed on the uh, tabs and solder connections there are still exposed connections like this bus bar and parts of uh, these uh, terminals which are at a uh, mains potential. This video is sponsored by JLCPCB.com who recently upgraded their offer so you now get 24 hours turnaround time and you can choose any solder mask color for the same price of just $2. Prototyping is now faster and cheaper so it's definitely worth checking them out. This is a concern if you are messing around inside the case while it's powered. Uh, which, by the way, you shouldn't do. But otherwise, if you get the uh, plastic enclosure like I have here, there shouldn't be any risk for the user because of these uh, exposed tabs. If you do get the metal case, open it up and check to see if the case is properly grounded to the earth pin present on the IAC connector. Next, someone reported that the secondary fuse on the PCB is not actually connected. So let's investigate this by taking a closer look at this PCB. Our mains comes in through this 3-pin connector and I've measured with the multimeter we do have a connection through the fuse. So that claim is uh, unfortunately or fortunately actually false because our fuse is properly connected on the PCB. Oh, and by the way, this is the second fuse. We also have a mains fuse installed right in the IAC connector. Next, people spotted something that I should have seen in the previous video. It's about the high voltage insulation between the primary and the secondary. So in the previous video, I mentioned there is plenty of isolation underneath the transformer between the uh, primary and the secondary side of this power supply. They have pretty good clearance on the bottom but I miss the fact that they have this big heat sink uh, crossing over from the primary to the uh, secondary side and it's going over this um, separation area uh, cancelling all of their efforts. If we look closely these are the uh, two mounting tabs for the heat sink and this is a um, high voltage mains input track and you can see we only have about two millimeters of clearance here and then this travels all the way to the secondary through the uh, aluminum heatsink. There is also another connection on the top of the PCB. It's uh, that track right there and this fin of the heatsink goes right up close to that track so potentially all that's separating um, the uh, primary to the secondary of this uh, power supply is the uh, solder mask thickness on that track. I'm guessing this is something they overlooked and in the end they had to accept because uh, they probably need this uh, large heatsink to keep the uh, temperature down for this device and since the heatsink is so large it's difficult to uh, route all those uh, high voltage uh, uh, tracks away from this uh, heatsink but it's not impossible. They could do it with a future revision. This is an important oversight though because uh, if this equipment receives a uh, high voltage spike on the input and the input protection fails to catch that then it could potentially arc over to the secondary side and all, all that's separating the, the two like I mentioned is some solder mask between the PCB tracks and the heat scene. The next issue is related to the grounding of the soldering iron tip. 
for ESD reasons, this station has the uh, negative of the uh, output of the power supply and the soldering tip connected directly to uh, mains earth through this track. This could potentially be a problem in a dangerous situation because it provides a direct path to earth which could potentially discharge a lot of energy. A quick fix for this would be to have the tip connecting to earth through a 1 meg resistor. I'm not too worried about this uh, issue but if you are the track connecting to earth uh, can be cut right here on the top side of the PCB and you can either install a uh, through hole resistor in here or uh, an SMD resistor. We have the, the spot to do that mod easily on the top of the PCB. Next there is an issue I noticed on power on there seems to be a delay between turning on the station from the switch on the back and the moment the display comes to life and I'm not sure if this is firmware based delay or if it's caused by the power supply having some kind of soft power on but we can certainly check for that we can measure the output of the power supply to see if it gets up to 24 volts right after power on or if there is some kind of delay until it reaches the working voltage and it would appear the power supply uh, reaches its working voltage immediately after power on. There is no delay caused by the power supply itself. The delay is uh, in our controller. It's probably something in the firmware in how it's written or I'm, I'm not sure if it's intentional or not. But don't worry it has nothing to do with the error message displayed on screen right now because I don't have any soldering iron connected. Uh, it behaves exactly the same even when even when I have the uh, handle connected. So it's not related to that. It's something in the firmware, some kind of delay that they intentionally or unintentionally left in there. This doesn't really bother me, but it raises the question as to why is that delay there. Someone also reported in the comments that there is a resistor on the controller board that slowly bleeds the internal CR2032 RTC backup battery. He said it's R10. So here is a picture of the controller board. There we have R10. I don't have a schematic to check what R10 is doing and how it's connected, but I can do a measurement of the current on the backup battery port and is indeed pulling about 270 microamps as indicated by my Fluke 87. Now one of these lithium based CR2032 batteries typically has around 200 mAh of capacity, so that would mean the expected backup battery life is about 740 hours or 30 days which is definitely not enough for a backup battery. By investigating this further and looking at the PCB layout, it would seem the battery plus goes through a diode and is then connected to VBAT pin on the STM32 microcontroller. We then have C1 decoupling capacitor connected to VBAT pin and it would seem R10 is just connected in parallel with our capacitor. Now R10 measures 10K and the quick math check confirms that the 10K resistor on a 3V power supply would pull about 300 microamps which is pretty close to what we were measuring earlier. I don't see the point of having this resistor in here and there is certainly no mention of this resistor in the datasheet of the microcontroller. I don't see the point of having this resistor in here in parallel with our decoupling capacitor and there is certainly no mention of this resistor in the datasheet of the microcontroller. So I'm gonna go ahead and just remove this resistor with hot air. And the station seems to be working fine with R10 removed. I'm not sure what the purpose of that resistor is. I'm also going to send this to the seller and ask if he can somehow communicate with the designer of this circuit to ask what the purpose of R10 is. One thing is certain, with R10 removed, the backup battery current has dropped to just about 1 microamps. So there you go, this uh, soldering station has some drawbacks, it's not perfect, but even so it is still my preferred soldering iron to use daily and probably one of the best stations that you can get for T12 tips. Well, except the genuine units from Heiko, which cost uh, a lot more. I'm sure some of these issues will be addressed in future revisions of the hardware, but for now we're going to have to live with them or maybe attempt to fix it ourselves. 
Thank you for watching, I would definitely appreciate if you would click the thumbs up button and I'll see you next week with a new video.